Assessment of Uterine Contractions in Labor and Delivery. The objectives of our expert review were to describe current clinical tools used for uterine activity assessment during labor, along with their advantages and shortcomings, and to summarize current knowledge regarding novel technologies for monitoring uterine contractions. A complex interplay of hormonal, mechanical, and electrical factors is responsible for initiating and maintaining adequate and synchronized uterine activity. Transmembrane calcium influx is a modulator of intracellular calcium. Initiate a cascade of events including the interaction of contractile proteins, myosin and actin, regulated by myosin light chain kinase, ultimately resulting in a muscle contraction. The propagation of this electrical activity is facilitated by gap junctions composed of connectin proteins that provide channels of low electrical resistance. Gap junctions increase the number prior to the onset of labor, creating a pathway for efficient conduction of action potentials. Electrical activity is then efficiently transferred to the whole uterus, resulting in rhythmic, synchronous contractions across the uterus, which act to raise the intrauterine pressure. There are a few methods for monitoring uterine activity that are in clinical use. Each method is associated with advantages and disadvantages. The methods are manual palpation, external tachodynamometry, intrauterine pressure catheter, and electrical uterine monitoring. External tachodynamometry is the most common method for assessing uterine contractility during pregnancy and labor. It accurately measures contraction frequency, and it allows the classification of fetal heart rate changes related to the time of uterine contractions. Its limitations include the inability to determine the intensity of contractions. It is influenced by maternal position changes and abdominal wall contractions, such as coughing and vomiting, and is less reliable in obese women. Intrauterine pressure catheter allows quantification of contraction strength as measured by Montevideo units, which represent the sum of the amplitude of each contraction over a 10-minute period. Adequate labor contractions have been defined by ACOG as exceeding 200 millimeters mercury, yet different studies refute this cutoff. Limitations are related to its invasive nature and occur at low rates, such as infections, uterine perforation, fetal injury, and placental disruption. A comparison between external tachodynamometry and intrauterine pressure catheter has been the subject of a few investigations. In one large randomized control trial, 1,456 women who underwent induction or augmentation of labor with IV oxytocin were randomized to receive either IUPC or external taco. The authors failed to demonstrate a decrease in operative delivery with internal tachography. A systematic Cochrane review of three randomized trials comparing internal versus external tachodynamometry was conducted, including 1,945 women undergoing induction or augmentation of labor. There were no reports of maternal or neonatal deaths in any of the studies. Neonatal outcomes did not differ significantly between the groups. No significant differences between study groups in the number of instrumental deliveries or cesarean delivery, the use of analgesia, and the time to delivery. There is no convincing proof that the use of intrauterine pressure catheter results in a reduction in cesarean delivery rates or improved neonatal outcomes. Therefore, it is not recommended routinely, but in specific clinical situations, such as obesity, patient movements, or TOLAC, though there is no evidence suggesting intrauterine pressure catheter has a role in diagnosing or reducing the risk of uterine rupture. Electromyography of the uterine muscle activity is a novel monitoring technique that relies upon detecting and recording the bioelectrical signals produced by contracting uterus. It is non-invasive and provides an accurate assessment of contraction intensity. The following animation demonstrates simultaneous measurements obtained from electrical uterine monitoring and intrauterine pressure catheter. On the bottom, standard IUPC recording and on the top, simultaneous electrical uterine monitoring is shown. The dot on the bottom tracing represents the point in time reflected on the top electrical uterine monitoring graph. In parallel to peak intrauterine pressure, pre-electrical myometrial activity is recorded. While IUPC records the pressure of a solitary point inside the uterus, the EUM measures numerous points on the uterine surface, allowing the evaluation of progression of contraction wave. 
Electrical uterine monitoring may allow contraction intensity assessment in clinical scenarios such as preterm labor or pre-ruptured labor, yet some limitations such as false positive reading exist.